I previously talked about how to use Cargo to manage and build your project and even create a new project. What we didn't talk about is how to use Cargo as a package manager to install Rust packages and dependencies to compile packages and so on and so forth. Today we'll be going through that. So if you haven't watched that previous video, check it out so you understand how to create a project. We're assuming you've already created your project. I have project one here named. So not only is Cargo a tool that can help you build a project and create one, but it can also help you install crates. Okay, in order to use Cargo more efficiently, we need to specify a dependency from the crates.io website. I'll talk about crates.io in a bit, but let's edit that file that we talked about earlier, which is the cargo.toml file. Use your favorite text editor to edit it, and we'll go and open it up. After it's opened up, go down to dependencies and notice that there are none. That's because we created a brand new project in the previous video, and we'll be adding a dependency that we require for this specific project right here. So for my example, I want a random number generator. So how am I going to do this? Well, it's fairly simple. First off, that site that I was talking about is crates.io. I'll put a link in the description below. This is where you can search for various crates that exist for Rust. And one here that I found is called random number, and it's at version 0.1.7. How did I find it? I just typed in random. And then I looked through, found a good one, generate random numbers quickly, clicked on it. It had some documentation so I could use it quickly. And I found this up top. Again, you'll need to find whatever crate that you're trying to use or whatever set of libraries you want. And something very specific to look for is right here. Add the following line to your cargo.toml file. It helps you out. Copy that to your clipboard. And now let's copy and paste it into our project config file. So for me, it was random dash number equal to 0.1.7. Don't forget the quotes around everything. Now save and exit. What we did in that file, we specified what version of the crate we want to be using for our specific project. Okay, now my project, I'm gonna going to go to the source folder. I'm going to open up that main RS file that we had created and we have hello world here. Well, I don't want my main function to print out hello world anymore. Instead, I want it to use the new crate I added. So how do I do that? I'm going to actually put it up top here, type in extern, then crate. So we're specifying a crate we want to use. I'm going to use the random number crate. And now that I've specified that I want to use it in my project, I can actually use functions from that crate. So for an example here, I could type in something like let a number. So I'm just gonna call it num. I'm going to do an integer eight and do a random exclamation point. And then I'll do really any number and I can specify that with dot dot. I won't be getting too much into this random function. Of course, you can look up the crate yourself and figure out how that exactly works. But I'm going to print something else instead of hello world in here. And that is the random number. I can do that with curly braces here, open and close and then space. And I'll also need quotes around these curly braces, like this. And I called my variable here num. So let me save this and exit. And I'll type in simply cargo run. What's going to happen when I do cargo run, it's going to compile anything that's needed by the, the random number crate. And I definitely did that wrong. I forgot you can't use dashes. So I'm gonna go back into main RS, not a big deal. Uh, let's see, it's probably a underscore instead. Do control, let me save that. We'll check and rerun cargo run. Okay, could not find the random macro in this scope. Again, I'm gonna go back in here and then this time I will actually specify using the random underscore number crate with uh, the random function. So it actually knows how to relate this back to whatever crate that we're using. So with that being put in, we should be good. Let's rerun by doing cargo run and look at that. It created our binary file with unoptimized and debug code and then spit out a random number. So just to make sure that the random number is actually generating something random, look at that. Now we have a negative 107. We used an 8-bit integer, which can go anywhere between, since it's signed, it can go anywhere between a negative 128 and 127. We can also build it for release, but what I wanna explain is that cargo run, what it really does, I'll do a cargo clean, is it just builds all those dependencies for the crate for us, installs and then builds everything together. So if I do that run again after cleaning, it says that it's compiling various different packages or crates, libraries, whatever you wanna call them, together in order to get the random number crate that we had included. 
then it actually builds our own project together because it's requiring that random number and now we have ran our program if you want to build it for release it's pretty easy as well you just you do cargo build and then you do dash dash release things should build here again it is a grabbing all those dependencies for that random number crate and after it's built it says here that it actually built a release edition that's optimized for us so where can you find this well let's look it's not in source you got to go back go to your target folder and inside the target folder you'll notice there's a release folder inside the release folder we can now run our project one file or binary file by doing dot slash and then project one that should give us a number and if we keep rerunning it notice how we're getting random numbers well congratulations you've installed and used your first crate in rust you're well on your way to programming with rust because crates are very powerful tools that other developers have already predefined for you and created functions so you don't have to go out there and reinvent the wheel instead using a crate is a great way to boost your productivity in rust and is one of the most fabulous things about Rust is that you have this powerful package manager which does all of the checks for compatibility and building your libraries together into a project. It's fantastic. A lot of languages don't have this and this makes Rust really powerful. Well, if you like the videos, make sure to smash that like button for me. Also subscribe below because you've already made it to the end. You might as well follow more videos like this and catch me in a great community on Discord. I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.